Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Hello guys, how's everyone doing this morning? Um, today's pipe is going to be a square branch. So I've run through making a, tacking on a piece onto an elbow, making a 45, and putting two flanges on a stall piece. Now I'm going to be fabbing together a square branch just to show you lot the techniques of installing it. So I'm going to be showing you lot how I tack this um, profile cut square branch piece onto my um, 10 inch piece over here. Now, the cut's already been made. This is basically just my technique of how I would put it on here with minimal effort. It may not be the fastest way, but this is the way that I use, and hopefully you can pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. By the way, if the energy is a bit low and my, my voice is sounding a bit weird, it's because I'm feeling under the weather. It's, what time is it? Seven in the morning right now on a freezing cold day. So yeah, bear with me, yeah? This is the drawing layout. So I'm going to measure back, put a mark here, put the two marks either side so I know exactly the two lines, the 45 should line up to. And I'm going to burn my hole, tack it on. I don't know if I'll weld it up in this video, but I'll at least show you how I put this on. So I'm going to start off with finding out what half the diameter of this pipe is so I know when I find my center mark I can put so I find my center mark and I can put two marks either side of it and then line up the pipe nicely within the two marks. So this is six inch 164 mil so I do 164 divided by two 82 mil so I know, once I find my centre mark, I'll mark out 82mm either sides and I can fit it nicely in the middle. And don't try to be a math genius. Use a calculator on everything really, even if it's as simple as 200 plus 150. 350. I knew that. I needed a calculator just to double check for me. 50. So now, I know what the top list is, 2,070 mil. So I'm gonna measure my piece of pipe. So 2,070 mil. Now, this here is bang on. So what I know is that the two flanges are gonna hang on 15 mil either side. So with this calculation now, 350 minus 15 mil. That is 335 mil. So I can go over this side here. 335 mil. Now, there's a, a technique. Always do a V. Anytime you're marking, always do a V. I'll give you an example. If, if I do a straight line, it's never exactly straight. So when you come back to marking it, you forget exactly where you mark. Is it the top? Is it the bottom? So your measurements can uh, move all over the place. So always do a V. Speed square. Now that, this edge here makes it nice, that it lines up perfectly straight. First line. Now this here is where, why I said you um, half the diameter, so now I know. 82 mil both sides. Eighty-two mil there. Eighty-two mil here. Now, I'm gonna check to make sure I got the right orientation when I put the four, the forty-five. My brain doing a fart. The forty-five um, square branch piece. That's it. Well, it's early in the morning today. So, if you look close. It's going to be coming out this way and I'm looking at here so the branch is coming out that way so I'll grab it and because I've got the two marks I can go on straight and I know exactly where it should be 
Yeah, so I'm putting these marks on it now, so I know the orientation that it's going on. But if this was just a piece of pipe, it's more important to mark it because putting it on one way, if you reverse it the other way around, it usually doesn't line up properly and you'll have small gaps one side or big gaps the other side. So yeah, I know this is odd. I can check like this. So just to be sure, 350 minus 82, so that would bring it to this edge here, minus 82 minus 15 mil which would be bringing the flange in gives me 253 so from this point here to that point there should be 253 mil bang on 253 mil so and either way um, with this job here is a class 2 low pressure um, water job so there's a 3 mil tolerance on the measurements anyway. So I can check the other side just to be sure as well. 175 minus 15 minus 82. 1653. 1653. 1653. Bang on again. 1653. So now I can mark it. When I'm marking it, I like to get up in the prep. So, um, how would I draw this? So here's the prep. Instead of putting the chalk line here, I like the chalk line to go as far in as possible. It makes your root come out nicer. Because when you're... So yeah, if... If you mark on the outside and it ends here, your root comes out in a weird way. It comes out in a weird way. So by bringing both edges nice together, your root lines up perfect. Now, I would usually put alignment marks on here, so when I come to put it on top after, I can line them up to make sure it matches up perfect, but because this is a 45, what I'm going to have to do is bring it back and, and probably alter the twist of it, so that doesn't really count. Now I can turn it out. on the inside line so when I put the square branch on top of it after it lines up nicely I'm just going to clean up the outside where I'm going to weld and then put uh, clean up the inside get rid of all of this um, small and all this nonsense inside and then yeah There's a, there's a few reasons why you would clean it inside the pipe. One is to get rid of all of this um, swarf and all this nastiness. Go it, welding over this isn't good. It kind of introduces porosity into your weld. Two, the bird the birds hanging inside uh, messes with your flow rate. And uh, three, this goes through into your strainers, and then you just don't know, you don't want that. Now the, the 
just earthed the pipe. Now, the Fronius, I'm going to put it onto um, a root setting. Okay, you're going to have to wait for the Fronius to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you look closely, the mode that it's in, this is some of the settings. So it's one mil wire I'm using, M21 gas uh, mixture, and I'm on in standard root setting rather than universal or dynamic. So this setting here allows me to just change my amps, and it automatically changes all the rest of the settings. So I'm going to root it at 140 amps, or at least tack it at 140 amps. So now I'm going to check my pipe. When you're um, leveling off the pipe, it's important to check more than one spot because pipes don't always run true. And then you want to give it a little wiggle because sometimes the wheels need to settle to make sure they're level. Okay. So now I can check, double check, make sure it's going in the right direction. Now I can put this on. I'm going to bring it over, roughly set it in place. Now this is going to be fiddly. If you're not using V stands or someone else to help you, it's going to be a fiddly thing to do. So let's see how well we get on doing it. Make sure it's lined up. I'm just gonna double check. 253. So yep, that's worked. Now because it's a 45, I'm gonna have to lean it backwards and then check this level of it here. I've got a better idea. I'm going to put a little tack on it just so it doesn't move and then see. So a little tack is going to hold it in place. Hopefully, it's going to be level. Nope. Get my wedge. I realise I've been calling these shims when they're actually wedges. So, if you look at the level right now, I've got a little gap in here that I would like to weld, but it's not perfectly level up here. So what I'm going to do, I'll put a tack on here and I'll be able to cut the tack on top and twist it over that little amount. It weren't tacking properly, I got a piece of flatter got a piece of splatter right in the tip. There we go. So now the bottom tack, I can snap the top one. Now I can twist it over the required amount. So I'm just going to hold this. So I've got a nice gap here. Now 
Now that's the level. I gotta check, make sure this is 253. Bang on again. And then I'm gonna bring it up and just check what this here is. This is so minute that it means nothing. See, if you look closely, now, the reason why I say so minute, it means nothing, just even trying to level it is effort. The slightest twist, the level goes all over the place. So, I'm gonna refer, as long as the two gaps are even, I'm gonna trust this, but if the two gaps aren't even, it's a guessing game, I ain't really gonna trust what this level is. But yeah, they are actually good. So I'm gonna tack this side here because it's got the wedge in it so it won't shrink. This 45 is on. And then that's half of the battle. Next is making sure that it's got the right measurement because you can put it anywhere and you can twist it any amount that when it's level here, this set may not be correct. So to me, this has got a set of 200 mil. So let's see how it is. So it's touching the line on the right. I've got my level here. Now, the diameter of 10 inch pipe is 136 mil. Uh, if you look close at this, so from 200 mil here to there is what I need to work out. But I'm, I can only work out from the top to the top so it's 200 mil minus which would bring it up to the top of this pipe here minus 136 mil and then I need to plus what half the diameter of this here is to get the measurement at the top plus 82 mil so it should be 146 mil set moment of truth 146 mil How much is that? 147 mil. Good enough for me. Now, that's just checking. Because I said there's a three mil um, tolerance, it's okay. But one thing is, you can just push this down a little bit. This may not be perfectly level, but then now, now the tip of it has gone down and then the set will be even better. Yeah, lovely. And we ran out of 45s, so we ended up chopping a 90 degree elbow, which is why this chop may not be perfect. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Now I can weld this up and then put the flanges on. And the reason why I'm putting the flanges on last, when I was putting on this square branch, I wasn't, um, nothing was dictating the level of this. I could just put this on how I wanted, with the gaps that I wanted. And then next, I can bring it to the right level, then put the flanges on, and I know everything's going to be bang on. Many a time, I've put flanges on first, and then when you go to put the square branch on, you've got an unweldable gap on one side just to get the measurement. So I'm happy with this.
So I'm going to start off by welding this bigger gap. The first side I, I prepped had a, a tiny little gap on it, so hopefully welding here should open up the other side. So I'm going to do a mixture of stoving the welds and a whole bunch of different um, techniques to get the root in. So yeah, now I'm making sure to push the, the arc all the way through. I want to get penetration at the very back of the weld. So that's why I stove it sometimes. If, if the weld gets too hot, I lean the pipe down so it doesn't blow through or I turn the amps down as well like I'm doing now. I'm adding a little bit of a weave into it as well. But what tends to happen, the, the prep side doesn't have enough metal to, to hold all the heat, so that side there blows away or burns away too fast. Now this side here, it's got such a tight gap, so I'm going to turn up the amp. And I ain't going to stove this one too much, not unless I have to. Yeah, I see it flowing right through That's what I'm looking for. And again, this is only class two. So that means for every 100 mil of welds, you're able to miss 25 mil of the root penetration. Stoving it down a little bit now, just so it's not too hot and it doesn't blow through. And when I'm going over the the tacks I like to bring the pipe up just so gravity is on my, my side to help me get um, penetration in there. Now I'm going to start this side here. I start way back before my tacks just so it can get hot before it gets to the tack and it can blow through which is doing right now but because I didn't use my three mil to cut the tacks away the chances are in the route you would see the you would see my start stops no my tacks sorry not start stops the tacks but that's okay like I said it's class two so this gap here is quite big so I've turned down the power and now I'm allowing it to just um, build up and kind of not drip down because I'm constantly pushing it up but something along them lines I've turned down the power a little bit more and now I'm adding a bit of a, a wiggle on it just so I can fill up the gap I'm allowing it to build up before moving on Now coming to the end, I've picked the pipe up a little bit just so it's easier to um, get penetration on the start stop. Now I'm over the start stop, I'm going to bring the pipe right up. There we go, that's in. Now for the last quarter. Again, starting well back before the before the start stops that I just drowned. I'm adding a bit of a weave just so it burns away. And the reason why I've, I'm um, I'm kind of stoving it like this is because it's got a big gap. There's like a three or so mil gap that I'm having to fill and I don't see any other way of doing it. If I try to keep it in position while trying to root it, it ends up blowing through. Coming to the end again, I start to raise the pipe up slowly. Oh, near the end it wants to blow through so I'm going to bring the pipe down just a little bit put two hands on it so I can get a nice weave on it now I'm back on the tack bring the pipe right back up 
turn up the power or it blew through a little bit there so I'm happy to do um, circles now there we go now that's in it's looking good now I'm gonna cap it at 220 amps maybe let's see I've got controls on my um, gun so if it's a little bit low I'll turn the power up So I'm starting, you know, I can start over here and then go all the way around in one go. So my gun is parallel on to the center of this pipe. And because I'm gonna put two runs on it, I can focus on the bottom layer more so it blends in nicely to the parent metal. This 220 amps pulse is um, working out nicely. I could turn up the power, but there'll be no need to. Right now, I'm making sure that my leg length sticks out a lot more, because I know I'm gonna put a second run on top. almost going up here a little bit I'm angling my torch um, so I'm pushing the welds a little bit otherwise it builds up too much it, it travels too slow builds up too much gets too hot and then blows through I'm turning the pipe now because I've reached the most I can kind of do with my wrist now I'm turning the pipe Now the pipe's what I think is top dead center, I can carry on moving around. I'm focusing on the, the bottom of my leg length just to make sure that's consistent. So when I'm done, you can see a nice, um, even, straight weld. But it's looking good. You can get away with only putting one run on it, but I prefer the look and the peace of mind knowing that it's got two runs on it. It's getting a bit hot right here. Now I'm doing a bit of back and forth, back and forth, because I can feel it's getting hot and it's burning my hands as well. Now I'm coming to my start stop. I'm turning the pipe up. I'm gonna come over it in a second. Yeah, now I've started, but I'm gonna go over about 20 mil, maybe 25 mil over my start stop, just so it blends in nicely. There we go, that was more like 30 mil. So there's the first run. Now depends on how I start off I may turn down the power of my second run but what I'm about to do is grind the, the top of the weld just in case there's any um, holes or anything between the two layers Lovely, there weren't no holes, but it also gets rid of the um, silica, so your welds go in a lot more nicer. Now I'm gonna start further back so I can go over my start stops nicely. I may turn down the power a little bit now and see how it goes. Yeah, I've turned down the power and I'm gonna move a lot more faster as well. This here is just like the peace of mind ceiling run. You definitely don't need two. This is all low pressure. No more than 10 bar will be running through it. Even when you're testing it, you don't even test it above 10 bar. Now 
now my positioning is a little bit more different while putting this run on um, I'm having to be conscious of um, how, how fast I'm going so it doesn't drip down over the first run while having to keep my speed up and uh, smoothness Then I noticed I got a little bit too high, which isn't good. And now I can feel that my um, torque is kind of caught up on my rollers, so it's limiting, it's limiting how much movement I've got. So hopefully it doesn't affect how the welds turn out. and I can stop two runs you can't complain with two runs there it came out I'll give it a 7 out of 10 I've done nicer but for an everyday normal job I'm happy with that So, like I said, for every 100 mil, for every 100 mil of pipe on a class two, you can miss 25 mil. So that basically means each tap, necessarily I don't have to grind them away, and you can um, just weld over them because that will still fall into the 25 mil per 100 mil. But I, do, I like to make my welds as nice as I can. Within reason, I do get paid um, per piece I do, so I'm, I'm always in a rush. But, with that being said, I'm happy with this. Now this here is um, part four of the series of, I would say beginner tutorials. Um, to start by making a, um, a socket neck, and then hopefully I'll be able to make a coffee stick for you lot to see. So if you enjoyed what you see today, um, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching. Awesome.